Welcome to Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. We're located at 550 East Little Creek Road in Norfolk, Virginia. Here at Living Destiny, our mission is to discover, develop, and deploy godly, global, kingdom-minded leaders and disciples of Jesus Christ. You're about to listen to another life-changing message. Get ready for some divine revelation. Here is Rev. Dr. Moses Asamoah, Jr. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, please turn to the book of Revelation. I hear some people get nervous about this book. I don't understand it because this is the book. This is the final judgment of Satan. So when he disturbs you enough, open this book and start reading it. And every time you finish one, you tell him, see that? That's for you. Amen. And if you can go to chapter 2. Let me ask you this question. This year so far, how many of us have read through the book of Revelation? Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Maybe some of you have never heard. I've I've done a little bit of uh, unqualified (laughs) research. And I want to tell you, um, how many of you have read at least halfway through the Bible so far this year? It's... It's July. We should be like a little past halfway. If you want to read from beginning to the end, if you want to read it directly, you want to take a few days and go on a retreat, it will take you about three days if you don't sleep. So if you decide I'm going to go and read the word of God without sleep, it will take you 72 hours and you can read through it. If you want to read through, um, if you want to read on a fast pace, If you read five chapters weekdays and ten chapters weekends, it will take you about five months to read through the Word of God. It is not very hard. I encourage you. If you've never done it, it's it's an experience to be had. And it's, it's an experience that at least every Christian, at least once, do that. Try, take the challenge and try reading through the Bible. Amen. And if you are hungry, hungry, it will take you six months to read through the Bible, and then you can flip and get another version of the Bible, and for the other six months, so in one, in one year, you can read it twice. Amen? May the Lord give you grace to read. Remember, last week, that's what we heard over and over from Pastor, is that he said that we don't read the Word maybe because we don't believe the Word. It is the lamp. It is the daily bread. It is the meat. It is the heart of God. In this word, he says to us over and over and over, this is how much I love you. These are the plans that I have for you. This is what I will do in your life. This is how Jacob and how Moses and how Jeremiah and how Hezekiah and how Isaiah and how all these other people were able to attain victory in their lives. So if you follow me, these are the promises that I can give you. That's what the word of God is. Amen. You know, I took the challenge this year and I dropped all other books and I read only the Bible through. I won't brag and I won't tell you how far I've gotten, but let me tell you, it is a lot of fun. I do. I read through it every year. This year, I'm going to read through it two times. Amen. Amen. The book of Revelation, the word of God says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things says he that is holding the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them to be liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake have labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, we are reading to uh, verse 5 I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And the cure that the Lord Jesus gives is remember thereafter. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. 
and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Amen. And I want to talk to you just briefly about this topic here, how to regain your sensitivity back. Life is, such a, set, is set up in such a way, there are times, and this, a lot of times when this happens, it's unknown to us. You're living your life, you're doing the best that you can, and life has battles and struggles and situations and circumstances. And as you're walking along the road, there are times when you just find out that you've lost your sensitivity. You listen to worship music or you stand to worship God, and you, it does, you don't, and it's not, worship is not a feeling. But you just find out that mm, it doesn't feel the same. You know, there are times when we all, I believe all believers, especially spirit-filled believers, we all know what it is to hear a song that reminds you. I remember songs that we used to sing, you know, uh, when I was 18 and 19, uh, when I was newly saved. There were people like Wayne Watson. There were people like Sandy Patty. You know, these are old, old songs. And when I listen to those songs, they take me back to the 19-year-old me. And oh my gosh, you know, and you just stay there and you look at how far God has brought you and tears just roll down your face and then there are times you listen to that same song and you don't it doesn't connect and you wonder what have I done what has happened I can tell you we can sit down and pinpoint and go back and say what sin have you done what mistakes have you done what word have you listened or whatever you know what TV program what music I can tell you it happens and it happens to almost every believer so let's leave how and why and what and let's go to the solution. Should you find yourself in that place where the sensitivity to the presence of God, the sensitivity to the word of God, the sensitivity to the power of God, the spirit of God is just somehow not what it used to be. Now, what do I do? Take it from me. You know, I've, I've, I haven't lived very long. You know, I'm, I'm still 29. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not standing up there. I can say that. <laughs> if I was standing up there, I would have jumped all the way to the ground like, no, 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 no. Um, but I know that it's a struggle, and I can tell you that I've seen it in the young, I've seen it in the old, I've seen it in the new believers. You know, you have some people two months or three months in, and it's like, I just, it, it, it doesn't feel the same. What did I do? And like I said, you can go on a really, really crazy wild chase where you can ask yourself and you can start to diagnose yourself. Spare that because that's how condemnation comes. What God does, he doesn't condemn, he convicts. And what conviction does always, it brings you back to your Savior. Conviction says, I am, I've broken something, Abba. Please fix me. Conviction says, something has gone wrong. I am coming back so that you can heal me. Amen? So let's start there. One of the things that you can do is a, a, a confession. And what confession is, is confession, the word of God says in Romans chapter 9, if we confess us. Is that Romans chapter 9? No. It's uh, book of James, chapter 1, verse 9. And it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James chapter 1, verse 9. Amen. So let me, let me take a side too and tell you why I just said, sorry, 1 John 1, 9. Um, God had given me a different message, and when I was driving here, God changed it. So I am going on quick notes, amen? Confession is agreeing with God. He's telling him he's right. Whatever the cause, whatever the reason, whatever has happened, God is always right. You know, um, we talked about on Sunday, we talked about pride, Pride is disagreeing with what God's word say about us. You know, we are born in iniquity, created in sin. 
And at any time, even our very own heart, that good heart of yours that God gave you, that is wonderful, that's awesome. The Bible says it's deceitful and terribly wicked. Can you believe it? So it can lie to us. The next way is invest yourself in the word of God. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. The word of God is what, sens is what brings back the sensitivity to us. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you've confessed and it's still not quite there and you need to do more. Get, bury yourself in the word of God. Start reading the word. Start reading those chapters and the books that in the Bible. I'm not talking about go find a self-help book. Go find somebody else's book. I'm talking about get the word of God, the Bible, and shut down things and shut down activities and shut down entertainment. And you and the word of God get in the face of God and say, I'm in your word. And he said that his word is, he sends his word and it healed. So the word always heals. So read the word of God. Find the time. Refuse to quit. Refuse. Don't read for half an hour or 20 minutes and say, I'm done. God is not doing anything. I'm not feeling anything. Stay there. Read until when you feel the spirit of God. I'm using a word feel and really I don't mean to. I should use the word discern. Because it's not a feeling, okay? Some of us don't have feelings. And if we talk about feeling, you're going to go home and you're going to try to feel something. Whereas the feeling is not what is, your sensitivity is not based on a feeling. It's based on a, the deep knower in you. Amen? Develop obedience. There are times when we lose that sensitivity because God gave us an instruction and we have forgotten it. Oh, we have just not done it. Sometimes the, the, sometimes the things that God asks us to do are so simple. I remember one time God sent me to somebody, not here. I went to, the, God say, go to that person, take your shoes off and have them step on your shoes. I was like, athlete's feet, fungus, stinky feet. How do I know what their size is? And a plot twist. He was a man. Yes. <laughs> I won't tell the rest of the story, but I was obedient. Another time I remember I was traveling from Connecticut to New York, and I was sitting in the bus next to someone. And the Spirit of God said, tell that person that kidney disease is going to become fatal is going to become a serious disease they will die if they don't repent we left one part of connecticut and we were going they were going to we i introduced myself i said hi i had small talk they were going this lady was going to new york too after we had that conversation she got up on the next stop and got off that bus it was in new york either she hadn't gotten there so obedience in small things you know you do you realize that where we fail oftentimes is obedience in very small things and you know like i don't have an airplane for god to tell me take your airplane and go give it to a minister or something like that i don't have it so really god usually like in the days of elijah the thunder the earthquake the lightning the fire came but the word say that god's voice was a still small voice god deals in small things god can say something as simple as stop watching that tv show or something as simple as stop eating after 6 p.m. It can be something so simple that you can overlook it and be like, yeah, you know, what's the harm in it? Obedience is one of the things that will help us as believers stay sensitive to God and to what God says. Another really, really practical, easy way of just staying sensitive to the voice of God, the Spirit of God, is worship and praise. 
shush up your prayer life, okay? And I'm not talking about just worship, closing your eyes. You know, pick a selection of 10 songs. That should take you about an hour. Well, 10 African songs will take you an hour. <laughs> American songs are about three to five. The long song is like five minutes. Most songs are nowadays are three to four minutes. That's it. You know, some songs, they even give you two minute song. Pick a list of songs and play those songs. And while the, you're listening to the songs, this, here's the difference. What, don't listen to the songs and be like, yes, mm-hmm, oh, yeah. No, let the worship flow out of your own heart. Because, you know, whoever you're listening to don't know what God did for you. Don't know what your relationship with God is. So while they are worshiping in the background to encourage you, Worship with your own words. Worship with your own songs. You know, there are times you just mute that song and you carry on with your own song, right? Even if it's a joyful noise. And the praise, just stand up and praise God. You can do, you can, some people do, they worship for 30 minutes and they praise for 30 minutes and they, that's their praise and worship session. Make it quality time. Don't make it five minutes. I'm going to praise him for five minutes and then I'm done. Whatever your praise or whatever the level of the hour or the timing of your praise, add to it. You know, so if your praise, your normal praise is just 10 minutes and that's where you are. And after 10 minutes, your brain start to wonder what is in the refrigerator, who is at the door, what's on the news, you know, that text, who sent me that text. Increase it from the 10 minutes to the 15 minutes. Just go from one level to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, and is there a limit? I can tell you no. There is absolutely no limit. So switch it up. Don't just pray in tongues only. Use understanding. Use the words you understand. Don't just praise in tongues only. Use the words that you understand. Practice by yourself, especially, especially there are many of us. It's so easy because the person next to you is singing. It's easy. Sometimes that worship when you are in your own closet by yourself is the hard one. Practice getting on your knees. Laying on your face before the Lord. You know, some of us, we haven't done that in a minute. We forget that it's part of worship. Lifting up your hands. You know, I've heard people do strange things, you know. Won't tell you anything strange, but I'm telling you the basics that you can find in the word of God. You know, Jacob in his old age, while he's prophesying to the 12 tribes, he bowed down all the way to the ground. It's in the Bible. Uh, the theme of our fast is fight, finish, and keep the faith. Fight and contend against spiritual laziness. Fight. It is so easy. I can tell you, you can have a whole momentum going. You have a whole week where you have praised, you have worshipped, you have read the word, you have gotten up at your appointed time, and you have worshipped and you have prayed every day, every day. And then this happens. One day, you know, while, you're, while Brother Eric is praying on the phone, you mute him, and then your phone say, blip, blip, and you go on Facebook. And then you missed half of what he has prayed. If it's something valid, you're dealing with something, you at work, by all means carry on. But during prayer time, during worship time, if it's not something that's sensitive that needs your attention right then and there, even if you're not, in the, in the, you're not with the person that's praying, please avoid to do that. Because this is, this is your time with God. And Brother Eric may not see, you know, and somebody else may not be looking at you. That way you feel like it's okay. Remember, God is always looking. And how we treat him, remember how we, if you were God and somebody was speaking to you and scrolling at the same time, how would you feel? When God said that to me, I, w I want to tell you something, okay? Let's be real here, okay? When God said this point to me, and as you can see, I told you it was on the fly because it's on this paper. 
I was convicted because I've done it too. I was convicted, you know, one time, I won't say who <laughs> heard me ordering food. <laughs> You know, that was God <laughs> pulling the rug from up under me, <laughs> exposing my stuff. I said, never again. <laughs> I'm never going to get caught again. And I had a good excuse, but you know what? Not good enough. And I thank God that I might have, that's how you lose sensitivity. You see, you start with, let me just check that text. You drop down and you look at the text and you say, I'll check it later. Eventually, one day, you find yourself having a whole full conversation, laughing. You know, and, and Brother Eric is like, praise him, praise him. And you're like, that looks good. Ooh, that dress will look really good with my pink shoes. Oh my gosh, those nails. Oh, when I go to the salon, oh, that hairstyle. Mm, that suit right there. And you're just doing your own thing. Come on, y'all. I'm not the only one that be ordering food. <laughs> I told God, thank you for busting me. <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> So I want you to know, okay, it's not, it's not just for the people that are sitting down. Sometimes it's for the people that are standing up too. Consecrate yourself. When you find you, you have lost some of this sensitivity, the presence of God is not what it used to be. The power of God is not what it used to be. Things that used to just make you cry. Things that used to make you think. You know, I used to have a friend that said, um, this is back years ago, um, the place that I was ordained before. She used to say, this bishop's wife used to say, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. She used to look at me um, and she would tell me, you know, I think back in those days I had just a few pairs of shoes, so I repeated my shoes on a regular basis. One day, um, she was mean nice sometimes. One day she told me, she said, uh, I remember the days when I had as few things as you do. Back then I used to love Jesus even more. Back then, my thoughts would go to Jesus quicker than they would go to anything else. And I looked at her and I was like, is this a compliment or an insult? I didn't know. But there are times, that you remember when the children of Israel were going into the promised land, God took almost the whole book of Deuteronomy and then the book of Numbers. He took them and, and Leviticus. He took all those books to give them instruction, even all the way to the small details, because God is a God that in, that's intentional. Do you know when they were consecrating themselves, they had to bathe? Sometimes we think consecrating is just fasting and is praying. No, they had to bathe their bodies. They had to wash. They had to clean their clothes. They had, God is that intentional. And if you're saying, I didn't know that, okay, you need to get on that one-year plan. Six months now, five months now. It's in there. Consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself to God with fastings and prayer. Eliminate ungodly things, but also eliminate unnecessary things. Also eliminate things that do not bring you to the presence of God. You know the word of God talks about sin, but it also talks about there are things that are not sins, but they are weights that so easily beset. As a result of that, it's like trying to run a marathon with a backpack that has, that has juice, bottles upon bottles. Instead of running fast, you're not able to. You don't run with endurance the race set before you. Because one, you're thinking about, you know, oh, that mango juice when I'm done here. I'm going to drink some of that. And then you're thinking, oh, maybe I should start with Gatorade. And it takes your mind off of the race. And now you have things that you're thinking about. It's a fight. It is a struggle. 
it is something Jesus said it this way. If you don't pick yourself up and put yourself on the cross and nail yourself every day, it's an everyday thing. And some of us, you're right there. You're there where your heart is, you're, you're there. You're saying, I can so relate to this because my sensitivity is not there. And it happens to the young. It happens to the old. It happens to the new believers. It happens to the veteran saints. It happens to the one that I ministry. It happens to the one who are not in ministry. It happens to women. It happens to men. It happens to all of us. You know, so there is a, a little action to be taken by every one of us. We should be living here saying, mm, when I go back home, this is the thing I will get rid of. This is what I will add. This is what I will do. You know, as a believer, the day when you, when you get to a place where you feel like I have learned enough and I don't need to learn anymore, that's the day when you begin to die. That's the day when you begin to die. The day when you feel like I've read my, I have a couple that's been my mentors since I was, when I was first saved, I was given, my aunt took me to this man that he's going to be with the Lord. And this man had a class that he had mentees. I was the youngest person in that class and we come from the same tribe. So he used to call me his youngest daughter, his baby. And he would tell all the people in that class, he would tell me their strength. He would tell me this one is strong in this thing. This one, in front of them, this one is strong in prayer. I want you to learn from them prayer. This one is strong in deliverance. I want you to learn from them about deliverance. And this one, and you know, when you're a new believer, maybe just coming from a different culture and different generation, I would follow you. I'm coming to you with my book. I'm coming to you with my pen. I'm coming to you with my highlighters. All of them, my Bible, I'm sitting down like, give me a class. I need to learn from you. Daddy told me you will teach me about deliverance. I'm here to learn. For, deliver, for prayer, it was him. I've witnessed that man one time. And this is a humble brag about a man that's going to be with the Lord, has joined the crowd of witnesses. That man prayed for 18 hours straight. I went to sleep. I got up. He was still praying. I prayed a little while. I went to sleep. I got up. He was still praying. But as a result of that, that's the man that I know in person that has seen dead people come to life. You know, sometimes we want all these things. I want to see dead come to life. I want to see demons being cast away. Are we willing to pay the price? I can tell you by the grace of God, I'm not there like that man, but I've seen a man that did it. And because I've seen a prototype, I am working my way to the prototype. And if I get halfway there, praise the Lord. Amen. Find prototypes. Find somebody that makes you feel uncomfortable. They are walk with the Lord the way they minister, the way they pray, the way they walk with the Lord, the way they honor, the way they give, the way they serve God, the way they work at work. It makes you feel uncomfortable. You're like, she thinks she's all there. And then the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, go to them and say, I admire that thing. I would like to learn from you. You know, we don't do that enough, right? You'll be tore up. Your spiritual life is all the way gone. You at home, you are not reaching for help. If you remember Sunday, that's one of the signs that you're dealing in and with pride is that you, you, you lack the ability to ask for help and you justify in your mind. You know, you hear like this old man, he used to work in the finance department. So he was a diplomat and God called him to ministry. And when God called him to ministry, he said, I will serve you because I love you. But these are the things that I require. One of them, he told God, I don't want my hair to grow. I want my hair to stay the same every day. And his hair stayed the same over 30 years. He never had a haircut. 
again, like I said, 18 hours. His prayer, his sacrifice in the spirit, his, sacrifice, his walk and his sacrifice was so profound. The word of God says that God will not withhold anything from whom whose heart is right towards him. What is a haircut? What is a dead body? What is signs and wonders and miracles? He won't hold those from us. But in order for God to give us his all, we have to give him our all. Last week, I was, it was me and the Lord, and I was praying, and I wanted, I told God, I said, you know, Lord, I've walked with you for a long time, and I've seen many things, and I've connected with many people, and I've watched their walk, and I've admired many people, and you know, I'm, I still get that God-like jealousy where I'm like, God, I want to do that. I want to be there. And I told God, I said, I don't know. There are times when I, I, I just want to cruise. And I just, I want to cruise, but I want the things that you promised me. I want the word that you've given me. I want to see these things in my life, Lord. You know, my book is falling apart, but I'm not letting it go. It's going to be, I have two of them. You see how much tape is there? Why? Because who, oh, the past three years, the past two years, I have some written promises in here, and I need them at any time. I'll be at work, and I turn around, and I just stretch my hand, and I touch the book in my bag, and I say, your promises, Lord, your promises, your promises. In Jesus' name, and I go back to work. And God challenged me and said, you know, he started reminding me, you remember how zealous you used to be for me. You remember that there was no way I wouldn't be willing to be kicked out of so that I can preach the gospel. There's no restaurant table I would not climb on and tell somebody about Jesus. There's no bus I would walk in without saying, shall we pray? And, you know, I can see I've gotten a little cute now. <laughs> I can't climb on tables. That's out. But there are things that I don't do like that. You know, there was no cashier that didn't get the gospel. There was no server that didn't get asked, you know, hi, how are you? What's your name? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? There are times I don't do it like I used to. And God say, return this word. You have forsaken your first love. Return. And I can tell you it's not a matter of being backslidden. It's not a matter of living a sinful lifestyle. It's just a matter of being zealous. Like Jesus said, when they watched Jesus whipping people out of the temple and they watched his life, they were reminded of the scripture from the book of Isaiah that the zeal for the house of the Lord has overtaken. You know, uh, there's a, a lady I won't embarrass her. She will be embarrassed if I say this in front of her that does particular things in the background in this house. Um, I used to do those kind of things. And, you know, um, nowadays I don't do as much. You know, and sometimes we look at it, yes, you know, uh, you grow in leadership and you provide, you provide opportunity for other people to do certain things. But listen, there's nothing wrong with coming in and saying today, I am here, assign me to the toilets, I will clean them. Today I am here, you know, walk around the building and pick all the papers, walk all around with your high heels and your pencil skirt. Pick all the paper with your suit, with your fancy doctor coat, with your fancy scrubs. Pick the papers all around. Walk around the building. Don't pick anything. Just walk around and decree and declare the blessings of God. There are things that I want you to go back and remember the things when you are a new believer that you used to do. That you loved God so much you decided A, B, C, D is how I want to show God my love. And you didn't care about who was there. And just start going back to those, especially if you are in that place where you're saying, mm, my sensitivity, you know, my prayer, my praise, my worship is not what it used to be. Go back. Go back and just begin to say, God, 
for your glory. Sometimes we say it, we sing that song, for your glory, I will do anything, right? And we mean it. But sometimes it ends as a song. It doesn't translate in real life. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, but this I have against you, that you have forsaken your first love. The point, how to get back to that sensitive place, to that place where you love God, you remember the things that you used to do, return to those. Confess to God, I feel like I don't love you the way I used to love you. Invest yourself in the word of God. Read the word like it's going out of fashion. You know, lay down other books. Lay down, I even laid down a devotional because I wanted to read and finish the word of God in just a few months. Develop obedience. When God tells you to obey, obey right away. Don't wait. Obey right quick obedience because delayed obedience, with all due respect, it's a good thing. But delayed obedience is disobedience. Gain your sensitivity by praising him on your own. Just praising him, worshiping him on your own, just worshiping him. Contend and fight against laziness. You know, and, some, and for it depends on the level where you are with the Lord. For some of us, you know, after two, like you have some of us, when you go to sleep, you have an hour, a fixed hour where you meet the Lord. Even if you sleep an hour, when the hour comes, he wakes you up. When the hour comes, it's like, my time. Now, the God, imagine the God of the universe couldn't wait. He's like, I know she's going to come. I have so much to share with her. And when the 4 or the 5 or the 3 a.m. comes, he's like, wake up. I have some things that I want to tell you. Imagine that the God of the universe, he's created all these seen and unseen things. He holds the whole universe just like this. He can turn it over and look at all things. And he's excited to spend an hour, to spend a half an hour, to spend 20 minutes with you the song you know who am I that you are mindful of me come on and then we look at it we're like I'm sleepy come on we need to fight laziness we need to fight sleep and God is a fair God he's not gonna always make you that way what God knows he knows when we need to stretch ourselves and he knows when we need rest. There are days when you show up in his presence and God says, I just want you to lay down. And while you're snoring, you hear songs of victory. While you're snoring, you hear songs. God sings over you. But some of these things you don't get unless you develop this regimen, this routine of actively pursuing and seeking. The words say you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Then you, then you consecrate yourself. You live a, a consecrated life. There are things that you don't allow yourself to do. There are places you don't go. You, you have a regimen or routine day or days of fasting, days of prayer, days when you say like this, this Saturday, you know, the first four hours of every Saturday is my time with God. And whatever you do, be led. Remember, we, we don't get to tell you. I, I can't tell you what you should do with God. You have the spirit of God. I'm giving you just an outline. And when you leave, you go and you say, this is what I'm going to add. This is what I'm going to take away. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I, you get to do that yourself. Okay. Because if somebody tells you what to do, they take away your will. You cease to be a human being. And if you make the changes based on somebody else's schedule, or somebody else's opinions, they don't last. Because that person has to be there every morning to wake you up. Has to be there every evening to say, read, read, read. You make the changes because you want to pursue him. Amen. Shall we stand? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If this message blessed you, click these videos to watch more. God bless, and we'll see you next week.